<laughs> Cobra Kai, born out of the iconic Karate Kid films over three decades later. Today, we're going to be reacting to and breaking down all the crazy fight scenes and injuries from the wildly popular Netflix show, Cobra Kai. But before we get into it, if you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Dr. Jordan Wagner. If you enjoy the educational reaction videos and other stuff that you see here on this channel, please smash that subscribe button and turn your bell notifications on. That way you learn when I post a new video. All right, let's dive right in. Easy, guys. That's my wife. Losers. Maybe I'll take her for a test drive. <laughs> Not funny. Go, Daniel LaRusso! <laughs> oh! Punching somebody in the face sounds cool and looks cool, but you gotta be careful. Somebody's mouth is open, you're gonna be punching them in the mouth, and you could potentially lacerate your hand. And so now, if you lacerate your hand and it opens up into the joint, now there's a potential you're gonna get bacteria into the joint, and it actually needs to go to the operating room to get washed out. Obviously, you're punching somebody's bone, so it's gonna hurt a lot. You have the potential of breaking somebody's nose, breaking somebody's jaw. Nice. So he's doing a lot of like blood trauma. There's actually no blood in the scenes. You'd expect actually a lot more blood. First place he hits the guy is his leg. He's trying to do a sweep, but then you also have to worry, are you hitting the person right at the knee? On the lateral aspect of the knee, which then will cause the knee to buckle in, which can cause an injury to the medial collateral ligament, the medial meniscus, and your ACL. It's called the terrible triad. Bring it down. Bring it So he hits the guy in the epigastric area of the stomach. You always worry about duodenal hematoma. Same kind of injury occurs if somebody's riding their bicycle and they get the handlebars jammed into the abdomen. It's just something to think about that there's a lot of internal injuries that can occur with a lot of blunt force trauma. <laughs> We didn't hear any obvious cracking or breaking of bones, just changing directions and stretching out the ligaments and the tendons, which cause a lot of discomfort and pain. If you're getting hit in the chest, again, blunt trauma, you could actually fracture ribs, and that broken rib could actually cause a hemothorax or a pneumothorax puncture into the lung, which then allows air to go around the outside of the lung, which as you continue to breathe, could actually compress your own lung down and make it useless. And the only way to treat that is basically sticking a chest tube into the lateral aspect of your chest, which is done emergently Fight. Oh, man. So right there he's getting hit in his left elbow. If it's already extended and then he's hitting into a hyperextended position, ouch. If he's hitting it and it's already flexed and he's just bending it, it's just hitting it at the tendon which can cause a lot of discomfort versus the opposite which probably would make the arm useless. If you're hyperextending you could potentially fracture the olecranon of the elbow itself and then cause it also to dislocate anteriorly which is really hard to do. Nice. That kick to the thigh, when you're getting kicked like that it actually stuns it for a second almost to get like a charley horse where it's hard to actually contract on that area. Luckily it was the medial thigh so that has to do with movements of bringing your leg in and out more lateral and medial versus flexion and extension. Oh a heel kick to the chest which actually can cause a lot of damage. It depends on where you hit. You can dislocate a rib right off the cartilage where it attaches at the sternum. You can crack the sternum. To fracture these bones it takes a massive amount of force so you have to be concerned that there are multiple underlying other injuries that you might not know about. Oh, nice! Both knocked out at the same time. Their brain got concussed enough to where they lost consciousness. Typically, if somebody loses consciousness, they lose all muscle tone, drop to the ground. Then what ends up happening is you're also concerned about the fall that occurs, depending on the surface that they're falling on. People will pass out and then fall on concrete floors, tile floors, carpeted floors, and then they can have secondary injuries due to them passing out. Or not. Oh, not this one. Oh! Sucker punched this guy on the right side of the face, which you can cause a fracture right at your TMJ. You can cause a fracture then that goes to the other side. You can break some teeth. Oh, see, when Johnny just took that guy's arm and did the elbow straight down, it's causing a hyperflexion injury. That's gonna hurt a lot and it's gonna incapacitate that arm. If it doesn't break it, it's still gonna be extremely painful and not be able to function the way that it should. Oh! Knee to the face. You can cause horrible whiplash injury and you can actually fracture somebody's neck. A lot of people come into the ER with whiplash injuries relating to car accidents. Most of the time people don't fracture, they're gonna start getting a headache because you strain the muscles of your neck which then gives referral pain right to the front of the head. 
<laughs> You're gonna complain of pain and actually probably be pretty pissed off. You're probably gonna have a laceration and bleeding, but to have your legs taken out from you, probably not in that situation. The guy's trying to choke him out. He's not doing a good job. I've seen so many times where people get choked out and they're out in like one second. As long as you compress the correct areas, you can knock somebody out in a split second, basically. Bam. If you're getting kicked and beaten down a lot, you're gonna have a lot of potential muscle breakdown, tusions, and you always have to worry about what's called the rhabdomyolysis, which is breakdown of muscle tissue, especially when there's a lot of damage and they can actually cause kidney failure. And typically what we're looking for is myoglobin in your urine. And so if somebody gives a urine sample and there's blood in it, but then when you actually count the cells, you don't see any red blood cells, it has to do with myoglobin versus hemoglobin. Oh! and the guy just took an elbow to the knee, that's gonna hurt. That's hitting the lateral aspect of the knee, which then you can stretch or rupture your medial collateral ligament, your MCL, which then attaches to your medial meniscus, which is the cushion of your knee, which could then rip, and then you can actually injure the ACL, which is your anterior cruciate ligament. If those rupture, your knee's gonna blow up like a balloon, you're gonna have instability of the knee, it needs to be repaired. Oh. So a lot of trauma to the abdomen with all these kicking. You can bruise the intestines. And the issue ends up being with like bruising of the intestines. It takes time for these to swell. So it actually could cause in itself a bowel obstruction where it actually blocks because there's so much swelling. You have so much surface area within the abdomen itself. It should be protective for you. It needs to be checked out because you just don't know exactly what's going on on the inside. If you start having distension, a hardening of the abdomen, nausea, vomiting, all these things you need to get checked out. Oh! Oh, that is a far fall onto, oh, onto the railing. Ow, come on. Now he's falling directly on his back onto a rail. I have seen these injuries and they're bad. The last one I've seen, basically spinal cord injury, paralyzed, fractures of the spine. Literally what we do in a trauma in these situations is you do your A, B, C, D, E, you roll them to their side and you're actually doing a rectal exam. It's called the DRE, digital rectal exam, looking for muscle tone of the anal sphincter because it should be tight. If there's a spinal cord injury, it'll be loose, which is horrible and bad. It's like the original. Oh, little hit to the chest. You know, even that simple hit to the chest, that compressive force, you're hit, you're shocking the heart. So you actually have to be careful that you're not having a cardiac contusion, that you're not gonna get blood around the heart, which is called the pericardial effusion, which could be caused by fluid versus blood. And then if there's fluid around the heart, it actually doesn't allow it to expand all the way out, which then decreases cardiac output. Oh kick right into the abdomen. Your abdomen is protected by multiple different layers of abdominal muscles. So you have your rectus abdominis, you got your transverse abdominis, you got your obliques. Obviously they're there not just for show for everybody's six pack or eight pack, but for basically protecting. In that moment, if you don't flex right before you get hit, you're not protecting your organs and you can actually cause a lot of injuries and bruising and even the major blood vessels there. So it's something to actually always think about. Do your sit-ups, make sure you're doing exercises that engage your core not only for structure, but for your own protection. I love Cobra Kai. I have watched most of these. Awesome. I'm a huge fan of Karate Kid, all of them. Let me know in the comments if you guys like this stuff. If you want me to do more videos on Cobra Kai, let me know. Let me know different injuries you want me to check out. And if you guys enjoyed this, check out this series right here. And as always, make sure you subscribe, turn your bell notifications on. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy, my friends.